your fatal flaw is because you care too much about your friends. And she says it as if it's like a bad thing that mm -hmm. like, oh, you're too like easily manipulated that every quest you go on is to save one of your friends and you need to like, I don't know, ascend to a higher level where you don't care about people or something. Because when I'm when I was thinking of this scene, it's literally literally Athena. What the fuck was he supposed to do? Like what what the fuck was he supposed to do in this situation was he supposed to let luke go and kill clarice like does that is that the option that he has like what other option does he have in this situation like is it really that he his fatal flaw is like there are times when his fatal flaw is dangerous where he puts himself through like things that he doesn't necessarily have to do on his own this is a bad idea stand up i'm okay this situation is not one of those like the things that happen on this quest is not him doing that it's literally like if i don't do this and everyone i know is going to die so what other choice do i have i tried other things we tried we don't want to do this we're trying we tried to get around having to interact with luke but he was waiting for us to come back because we didn't realize that he wanted to take the golden fleece from us like, so they thought that they were going to get away from him before they got back to camp. They thought that Luke was more focused on camp. They didn't know that he was actually focused on them specifically in that way. So he could steal the golden fleece from them. That changes a lot of things. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't know what she expected him to do. Like, I don't know what he... Is he supposed to just sit back and let everybody die? <laughs> well, so Athena's favorite Odysseus does some pretty shitty things, which I, I hate admitting because he's one of my favorite heroes, but he's my favorite hero because he's one of the more interesting. It's not because he's like the most morally sound. Um, so some examples, Philoctetes, I've talked about that one on my channel a bit, where Philoctetes gets injured on the way to Troy, he is suffering with this like festering, smelly, gross wound. And Odysseus is the one that comes up with a plan to leave him while he's napping when they stop at an island. And Philoctetes hates him for that. Like that is an example of Athena's favorite doing what she thinks should be done. Another example, I hate this one. He is the person who throws baby Astyanax, you know, the crown prince of Troy's son. He throws him off the walls of Troy. And, you know, like that is the kind of person that Athena favors. So she really does favor this, like, you know, logic over emotional ties type of thing. And it's a thing that we see heroes have to grapple with a lot in fiction, because like the, the biggest example of that to me is Aang when he's going through his little chakra exercise and he finds out that his attachment to Katara could potentially be bad. And he gets conflicting advice where Guru Patik is like, no, you need to let go of that attachment. You need to, you know, not be so connected to her. But Iroh is like, why would, why would you throw that away? You know, and neither of them is wrong, um, but and does learn how to do it in a more balanced way because he does get to have Katara and his avatar stayed in the end. Yeah, and I love Aang. Aang's one of my favorite like other hero things out there, even though most people think he's boring. Why do most of the characters I love people think they're boring? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but it's he is very similar to Percy in that way that he Percy is not willing to like win per se, just to win willing to do that if it means that he's doing horrible things to to do that he's that's like what makes percy percy and why everybody loves him so much is because he's like that because he he wants to help he wants to win in a way where everybody can win he doesn't which is a very scapegoated thing to do is to be like i only want to win if everybody does what is the point of me personally just winning mm -hmm. and so that's like his whole outlook and this is probably just my own like scapegoated background, but I genuinely cannot fathom another way of thinking. Like I try and I'm like, I don't, I don't like it. Bleh, it feels gross to even imagine thinking another way. So when like, I know when we get to that 
scene with Athena, I'm going to want to like murder her <laughs> because I'm just like, I don't understand what you want him to do. Like, especially in the book that that happens in, I'm like, should he have just stayed at camp and had nightmares about your daughter being tortured by Luke and just been fine with it? Is that what, would you like him better if those are the decisions that he makes? Instead of literally just running out of camp as soon as he possibly can with no supplies or anything to try to save her because he can't handle seeing his best friend being tortured like every night when he goes to sleep like i, I don't know why like that's part of the like just weird like craziness with athena is that she thinks that that's a bad thing and i'm just like i don't i don't understand why you think that's a bad thing like luke and percy luke wants to be a hero for like his ego like he doesn't actually want to be a hero like he's he's mad when he gets hurt on a quest and they don't let him go on quests anymore because he wants the notoriety and like the chaos and the attention of everyone being like luke is amazing by going on a quest he thinks yeah. it is the worst thing that's ever happened to him that camp is like i want to protect you from being harmed so because you got hurt on this quest and you have a scar on your face we're not going to allow anyone else to go anymore. He somehow sees that as the worst thing ever because all he cares about is getting that like love and admiration from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and like Percy goes all on all of these quests, but he doesn't actually want to go. But he goes because like he doesn't want to go just to go on a quest, you know? He wants to go because he cares about what is happening and he can help. And that's the only reason why he goes on any of these these things and it's just like the fundamental difference between those two like the golden child like scapegoat outlook luke would be excited to go on these quests because he'd be like oh yeah like this is a weird analogy but i feel like it's like when you watch like star wars or a marvel movie and as you as we exist who understand like character analysis and remember english class and all that kind of stuff like we look at like the character motivations and the storyline building up and then you talk to like somebody on Reddit or like what I call like Marvel bros who are like usually like 19 year old kids. So I, I, I understand. And they'll be like, oh yeah, I really, I, I'm really excited about that to watch that movie because it's going to have like a cool costume or the yeah. fights are going to be really fun to watch. And it's just like, that's not what I'm thinking about, but it like reminds me of that, that like if Luke, if Luke in a, another alternate universe was not doing what he was doing, and it was it was between like him and Percy to go on this quest. He would be like, "Oh yeah, it'd be really fun to like fight like Scylla and and the other sea monster who I feel weird about pronouncing because I probably will say it wrong." Charybdis. Yeah, that like he would probably be excited about fighting them to beat them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would be the fun part of it. He would be excited about fighting Polythemus and like ripping his eye out of his head. And yeah. that would be the stuff that he would think was was excited about going on quest. While when Percy goes on it, he's like, "Can somebody not die? <laughs> like, I, I just want someone not to die." <laughs> well, we see Clarice go through that journey because Clarice is in it for her personal glory, for you know recognition amongst her dad. But we also see her forego that at the end because she willingly tells them what the prophecy is even though it's not good and she then takes it back to camp and like she was 100 percent trustworthy in that situation where she actually did what she was supposed to do and it wasn't you get the sense that she wasn't only doing it for herself that she knew like i need to get this to for camp to survive i don't need to be the one to bring it back to camp as long as it gets back there, that's all that I care about. And in this sort of world that is all about like personal glory and notoriety, everybody is like, you have 77 heads. <laughs> like what, do, what, what? And it's like, yeah, I genuinely don't care. And like, this is where I feel like so similar to Percy in the way that I like, yeah, that reminds me of the way that I talk about the things that I talk about where I'm like, I literally would rather you not be able to see my face when I'm talking about this stuff, I do anything to try to figure out a way to show my, but I finally like accept it. I, I finally, I probably have to show my stupid face. But if I, could, if I could figure out a way to get people to listen to me without them having to actually look at me or know anything about me, 
or anything at all, I would do that. But I, but I can't figure out how to do that and hold people's attention. So I just show my face, but I don't care if you, if you, if I get like, you know, credit or whatever, I just want you to do it. (laughs) Just, just listen to me and do it. I don't care if you tell them, if you say that it's me or not. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's like that sort of a thing of like, I don't care if I'm the one who brings the golden fleece back to camp, as long as camp gets saved and Thalia's tree doesn't die before you get there, that's all I care. Like, and they're like shocked by it because nobody in this stupid world actually acts like a hero. Yeah. Even like the, the heroes in the past.